But before diving into the new process relating to data management in Repman, we wanted to highlight an event that we've been working towards for a long time and that will unlock many opportunities for upcoming changes to Revman and to Cochrane reviews in general. I'm of course talking about fully moving to Revman web. So as of April 25th this year, we have removed checkout to Revman 5 and we will very soon remove check-in. So this is a final heads up to all of you out there who haven't checked in yet, do it now. In preparation for this, we've made sure that Redmond Web supports all Cochrane review types and that you can subscribe to access Redmond Web for reviews that are not published in Cochrane. Moving to a web application was based on feedback from users and the need to respond to changes to review process and content fast. By only supporting a web application, new feature developments will be much quicker and will be available directly when you log into the platform. Some of the improvements that we planned for 2023 includes changes to the review structure and subheadings, template functionality to guide Cochrane authors for different review types, and new statistical methods for random effects. On the list below here, you can see some benefits of using Redman Web. So first of all, authors can now work collaboratively on a review at the same time. Secondly, for intervention reviews, risk of bias 2 is optimized within Redman and authors can integrate their review with Great Pro GDT to create summary of findings tables based on the data that's in Redman. And if you then update your analysis data in Redman, you can push that into the table in Great Pro without any manual work. And finally, one of the big benefits of using Redman Web is that study-centric data is now default for all new reviews. So what study-centric data is, the benefits to authors, and how it fits into the larger vision of improving how we innovate with sharing and using Cochrane evidence is what we'll be focusing on in this webinar. So what is study-centric data management? It's a form of data management where authors are guided by Rathman to plan more details around their analysis earlier. This will streamline the later analysis stages and should equate to better defined and better focused reviews with clearer review criteria and clearer criteria for different comparisons. This change is not taken from thin air but it's based on methods in the latest Cochrane handbook and um, also on instant guidance on defining the criteria for including studies, PICO criteria for the review, how studies will be grouped for synthesis, PICO criteria for synthesis questions. And uh, many of you were, may not be aware of InSync yet, but it's a new guide that extends what's in the Cochrane handbook to help authors plan and report their synthesis questions. More about this will be shared via Cochrane's channels very soon. So next, we'll walk you through some of the key benefits um, of working with the study-centric data workflow, because there are a lot. First of all, choosing to use study-centric data management in the review will help authors think more systematically about how to structure their analysis earlier in the process. This process allows easy transfer of large data sets into Rathman through the import. So this is done via CSV files, and these could be generated by Covidence in Excel or any other tool that generates CSV files that adhere to the Rathman template, which is publicly available. Data can be reused for different analysis as data is stored at the study level and not the analysis level. This reduces the time to require, required to generate the analysis, but it also reduces the risk of entry errors as data is entered only once rather than repeatedly for each analysis. It also involves automatic transformation of data to combine arms and include both contrast and arm level data in one analysis. Essentially, Rathman will calculate contrast data from arm level data. 
uh, meaning you don't need, really need to use the calculator anymore. This process simplifies the interpretation of results. This is because, as we mentioned above, data can be reused for different analysis, but it also allows you to investigate broader or narrower synthesis question based on different levels of intervention granularity. So for example, you can use study-centric data to analyze both vitamin D low dose versus placebo, which is a narrower synthesis question, and vitamin D versus in any dose versus placebo, which is a broader synthesis question. This process also allows you to subgroup or filter for a sensitivity analysis based on a covariate. So in a more structured way than if you would just um, exclude um, manually. So finally, your published review will have a greater impact. Following recent changes to our Cochrane Shares data, with study-centric data, study results data are shared and published on published reviews. And research has shown that sharing data leads to increased visibility, usage and impact of your research. So it will help your work be seen and heard by everyone out there. We also know from our funders that better data sharing is increasingly becoming a key requirement in this area. And what's great about RefMan is that it automatically structures and organizes the data so you don't have to. So now let's have a look at how the review process changes with study data management. So as you can see, it's a bit of a complex um, chart, but I'll walk you through it bit by bit. This overview shows the differences in the review process when using study data management compared to the existing process. So in the planning stage, as you can see, when you're planning your review, at the protocol stage, there are two new steps. And these are defining the review criteria and setting up the synthesis PICOs. We'll walk you through these steps in detail uh, with an example in the upcoming webinar, but today we'll also show you how the interface looks like in RefMan for doing the, these parts. In the preparation phase, where you design your data extraction sheets, with study centric data, you can use predefined templates to make sure import will be simple once you've extracted your data. So this isn't really an extra step, but could be done as part of the process where you design your data extraction templates. In the population stage, um, you'll get the most benefits of the study centric data process. So you just need to lean back and enjoy. So the first benefit is, is that instead of manually entering or pasting data, you can import all the data in one go. This includes study characteristics, risk of bias, and result data, so the data that will go into the analysis. The second benefit, and this is a big one, is that when you've imported your data, RevMan will have automatically generated your analysis and made transformations required for inclusion, such as combining ARMS or generating contrast data from ARM data. Thirdly, when you have your results in RefMan, if you want to extend the analysis you've defined in your protocol to investigate sensitivity or subgroup, this can be easily done by defining a new analysis with different synth synthesis PICO. So you can also see that we've um, crossed out several steps here um, uh, compared to the old process. So what does this mean for you as an author? Well, basically, since uh, April 25th this year, um, if you're starting a new Cochrane review, um, study-centric data will be enabled by default, and it's also recommended to be used. But it's noted that you can still use custom input analysis. And um, even when you have it enabled on a review, you can choose to use the custom input analysis for some analysis um, and study data for some. If you have a protocol review in development, but you have not yet started data extraction, 
it's also really worth considering switching to study-centric data due to the benefits. And you will be able to enable this feature on your own in the Redman Web interface on the dashboard. If you've already started data extraction, or if you're working on an update, switching is possible, but it's, it, it can be complicated and requires authors to read your work, such as revisiting original study reports, setting up review criteria in Revman, developing data import files and redoing analysis. So this isn't really recommended at this stage, but it will be, um, you should consider it on a review by review basis, basically. So let's have a look at how, how this looks like in Revman. So basically, when you've enabled study-centric data, you'll see three key things on the dashboard in a review. First of all, um, in the status panel, you can see that study-centric data is enabled. Second, you can see that in the left-hand navigation panel, there's um, a new section called review criteria. This is where you'll be starting um, with a new study-centric data process. And thirdly, you can also see that in the action menu, there's an import study data option. And that's where you'll be able to um, import all the data from CSV and RIS. So let's go ahead and look at the review criteria because this is really the foundation of the entire process. This is where you need to start um, and something you should be working on in your um, a protocol state, so early on. So what you do in the review criteria is to define the eligibility criteria for the review. Details in this tab are used to inform the eligibility criteria for each th synthesis in the review, your data extraction forms, and to set up your analysis in Revman. Looking at the intervention tabs, where you define the granular level of interventions for the review, um, if you want to do narrow synthesis question. The intervention groupings tag is where you group your granular interventions to broader synthesis questions. Outcomes are your um, outcomes, all critical and important ones. And in the covariates tab, you can add study characteristics that you want to investigate through subgroup analysis or to filter for sensitivity analysis. The characteristics tab includes high level criteria for extracting data from your included studies and the risk of bias uh, tab includes the domains of the risk of bias tool that you plan to use. These are already set up as a default, so you do not need to edit them, but uh, the previous tabs should be um, completed as a first step. Um, let's go to the next slide, perfect. And when you define your review criteria, what you do next is to start thinking about which analysis you want to do in your, anal uh, your review. And based on the review criteria that you've defined, you'll be able to select the synthesis PICO for each analysis. And this basically defines which data RefMan should pull into the analysis. This includes defining the outcome, the experimental intervention, and the control intervention. You can also investigate sensitivity in a structured way by filtering based, based on covariates uh, and subgroup by covariate. In the upcoming webinar, we'll show you how to do this with an example, hopefully helping you uh, understand the process in more detail. Um, the most efficient way to get your data into Refman is using the import that is available on the dashboard that I showed you earlier, because this allows you to import all study data in one go. And we'll walk you through how to do this in detail in the next webinar as well. Um, but today we wanted to show you just where you can access and edit the study-centric result data that will be pulled into the analysis. Because as you can tell from the name, study-centric man data management, the results are now included on the study. So in this screenshot, you can see that we've actually navigated to one of the included studies, which is Forno 2020. And within it, you can see all of the data related to it. And part of that is both the study arms and the result data. 
Um, so this is basically where the result data will now live. It's linked to the study. And we can compare this with how it looked like in um, the previous setup. Um, so that's um, uh, the default form of analysis previously is what we now called custom input analysis, where data from the included studies are entered and stored in each of the analysis tables. And so it's harder to reuse. So in this example, we have vitamin D versus placebo and uh, the outcome one or more exacerbations. And basically for each analysis, you'd need to enter the data separately here. So we're really hoping that uh, the study-centric approach will drive a lot of benefits for authors. And we have uh, in our work to implement study-centric data, we've both had a pilot with author teams using the feature and completed training with some of the Cochrane teams who provided hands-on support for authors. And the feedback we've had so far is really positive. So we're really excited to finally roll this um, process out and uh, to hear feedback from you using it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>